Yeah. Came up from the mud, it's like I walk around with a shoe stain. Uncle gave me fire when we kicked it, he was Luke Kane. Remember we were struggling for it, then I needed loose change. Now the money never Welcome back to another episode of I Am Athlete. Uh, had to jump on this one and we had to go virtual because what my brother just did is epic and it's someone that I've always respected. Going back to when he was coming out of college, we came down, he came down to sunny South Florida and uh, he worked out with myself. There was the Antonio Browns of the world, the Ocho Cinco's of the world, so many other receivers, and, and he stood out. He stood out because he was the only wide receiver that wanted to run post and goes over and over and over again. I'd never seen anything like that. And there's no surprise, I'm not surprised that uh, he is one of the best to ever do it. So I welcome uh, Mike Evans, my brother, to I Am Athlete. Bro, what's up? What's good, B Marsh? How you feeling? Good to see you, bro. <laughs> really quickly before we dive into um, a few questions, where are you at one to 10, right? So what I, what I what I what we love doing on the platform is where are you at one to 10 mentally, where are you at one to 10 personally, and where are you at one to 10 professionally? 10 being great. 10 and all of them. Wow. wow. Explain. I mean, obviously professionally, you can be better, but I'll give that like a nine and a half. I like it. I like it. So, so how'd you get to a 10 across the board or, you know, 10 with a nine and a half? I'm just blessed, man. I'm just blessed. Um, obviously, I mean, life ain't perfect. It isn't for anybody, but I'm just happy to be here, happy to be in this position. Like I said, I'm extremely blessed and uh, I always revert back to that. When something's bad in my life, I got my family, I got my friends, my teammates, and uh, I just got to go out. Bro, you're the first player, the first wide receiver ever to have 10 seasons in a row uh, to go over 1,000 yards. Uh, you know, you also won a Super Bowl. You know, there's so many things that you've done. What else is there left to accomplish for you? A lot more making plays and, um, you know, winning games. You know, I'm feeling good right now, year 10. You know, learn how to take care of my body. Um, I still love the game. You know, it's motivating me. My kids are getting older. I want them to see me, you know, out there on the field living my dream so it can get them extra motivation to, you know, try to go after their dream. How, how, how big is this, bro? Like, for real, like 10 years in a row yeah, yeah. to eclipse 1,000 yards? Like, that's legendary. I, I don't know. I mean, I may have done five or six. You know, Woo, can we get a fact check there? You know what I'm saying? Like, you played 15? I played 13. And one of your best years was at the end of your career – that's right. I remember. That. I remember that. That's right. I when remember, I was playing for the remember, you had fifteen hundred, like fifteen touchdowns, or something crazy like that with the Jets. That's, That's right. Magic. That's right. Fitz Magic. Fitz. Yeah. Hey, bro. How awesome is Fitz Magic? I love Fitz, man. Like Fitz is gonna get you that ball. Oh. Like, <laughs> yeah. I love Fitz, man. Super, super smart. Fun to be around. Everybody uh, in the huddle rocks with Fitz, man. All right. Uh, rank your 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 top quarterbacks. Yeah. You got Baker Mayfield. I love the flair. You got Tampa oh, Tom. You got Fitz. Bro, you got to rank them in order, bro. All your quarterbacks. Obviously, Tom is the best ever, so he's going to be one. But after that, they're all a tie. I love them all the same. <laughs> That's what y'all try to do on these, man. I try to get people in trouble. <laughs> look, look, look. No, I'm not, I'm not trying to get you in trouble. But tell me a little bit about the, those guys. Then we'll get back to, you know, how special, uh, uh, you know, what you're doing is. Uh, Tom Brady. You know, give us a story about Tom Brady. What makes Tom Brady Tom Brady? What's special about him? Like something that we don't know. You know, when he walked in the building, you know, you know, what was that one thing he did? He was like, oh, that's why he's Tom Brady. That's why he's the GOAT. I mean, everything y'all have heard about him is true. The work ethic, uh, the way he takes care of his body, how meticulous he is with details and making sure guys know what they're doing, making sure all the guys are playing their absolute hardest because every game matters during the regular season. Um, you know, all those things are true. And he's super down to earth. Uh, my first time meeting him, I couldn't believe it was really him. Like, he walked up on me. It was real sunny. We were about to go run routes uh, in Tampa during the COVID year. And just walking up to him, he was so tall. And it was like, wow, that's really Tom Brady. And he's about to be my quarterback. So um, just a living legend, uh, the best to ever do it for a reason. What did he teach you? What I learned most from him was not to take – this opportunity for granted and taking care of your body. Because, you know, when you're feeling good, you know, you're gonna play great. 
So that, that's the main thing, you know, just try to have, make sure your body is good to go because you can play play this game for a long time and make a lot of money. Right. Were, were, were you lobbying for him to come back, right? Like he retires, then he unretires, right? Like did you lobby for him to come back? I didn't. It's too much to ask, especially from him. I mean, at the time, the first time he retired, I think it was 20 seasons, man, or 21 seasons, something like that, which is – unheard of and he took a lot of injuries throughout his career but he you know he took care of his body but I, I couldn't ask him to do that because he's done so much for the game so much for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers organization with a short period of time he was here it's hard to ask yeah give me something special about Ryan Fitzpatrick one of the s- smartest dudes I've ever met in my life Harvard grad great 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 deep ball super fun to play with Bro, love Fitzy. He actually, he just texted me right now. Let me, let me FaceTime him. You know, he loves you. Let me face, he literally just FaceTimed me. Uh, his birthday, while just, we're getting his birthday just, just passed. His birthday just passed. Right, yeah. You, yeah, you saw that. Let this me face turned 50. He's so funny. Let's see if he answers. He he literally just texted me like two minutes ago. He's texting about like Sunday night football or something. He's still sending me plays. Uh, he's not answering the phone. He'll call me back. Uh, Baker Mayfield. That's my guy. Love, Bake. Wait, wait, you, are, I've, been, are you, I've been blessed to play with a lot of great quarterbacks. Heisman Trophy winners, greatest of all time, first first overall picks. I mean, they're all great. Uh, Baker, a lot of energy. He's going to fight to the very end no matter what. Always positive. We love Baker. And hopefully, you know, we can, you know, take take control of this NFC South. Bro, I mean, he, he's a bit of a journeyman. Um you know, so like when he got to camp, there still was a quarterback competition. You know, are are you surprised that you know Baker is, is has you guys in his position still in playoff contention? No, I'm not surprised. I knew he was super talented. You know, from the get go when we were throwing, uh, throws really friendly balls, um, works his ass off, and like I said, he just plays extremely hard the whole game and game in game out through injuries. So we got a lot of respect for Baker. Okay, before we move on, bro, I want to get back to this, right? 10,000-yard 10, 10, 10, seasons to start your career. It's unbelievable, right? Most guys only played three or four years. Um, for you to do this, never been done before, is legendary. Was like, When did this become a goal of yours? Has, was it ever a goal of yours, right? Because sometimes, like, I, I'm pretty sure you didn't come into the NFL saying, I want to go 10 years in a row. Uh, over a thousand yards, like that just doesn't happen, right? I don't know who thinks like that. Yeah. I mean, correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, but when was it? Was it like year six, year seven, year five? Where you're like, oh, this could be a thing. I mean, early on, you trained with me. You knew I was super confident. I remember you telling me, "Oh man, I feel bad for you, bro. Like the books are gonna be awful." And I thought to myself, "You're crazy," but you were right. We went two and fourteen. Uh, but I always was confident in my abilities. Um, and a thousand yards is like a plateau that all receivers want to hit, even when you're in high school and college. So every year I wanted to get it, even when I was a rookie. You know, I was the number two behind Vincent Jackson uh, my first year. I think he had a little more targets than me that year, but I always wanted to reach that thousand yard plateau. But I'm talking about ten though, ten in a row. I mean, yeah, ten. I didn't know I was gonna play ten years. I mean, nobody knows because you know there's a lot of uncertainty uh, that comes with this game, uh, injuries. You might fall out of love uh, with the game. The business side might, you know, take away from it. But every year I played and was healthy, I wanted to get a thousand yards. So, yeah. yeah. So, so I'm sitting in uh, House of Athlete, right? House of Athlete, formerly known as Fit Speed. You were one of the first. Ocho Cinco, mm-hmm. even To, yeah. uh, Mike Sims Walker, um, uh, Chris Johnson. So, so CJ Two K. Um, there's so many Darcy Johnson. So many guys like helped launch. You know what House of Athlete is today. Um, you know, you know it was really special having you there. Um, when you go back to those days, bro, you know, like what did you learn during those times? Like being around some of those guys, and then even when you didn't come back and you started training, like how pivotal was those de- those days? Like looking up to some of the OGs. Oh, that was very valuable to be around you, uh, NFL great legend. A uh, guy I looked up to in high school, it was cool to shadow you and see how you worked, how you took care of your body, how you treated your family, treated your loved ones. Like that was really big time for me to see so early in my career. Um, yeah, so again, I appreciate you for that. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot, man. And being in that heat, 
I learned how to hydrate because I remember I came in one day and I was cramping. I had to go to the hospital one night because I was playing basketball and doing all your hard workouts. And I was cramping and I was laughing at me the next day. And so ever since then, like, I've been hydrating like crazy to make sure that never happens again. So, you know, I appreciate all the little things you taught me along the way. No, nah, man, for sure. You're, 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 you, you, you're a real legend, man. And what you're doing is epic. Um, I go back to those days, bro, and I'm not trying to get messy here. But I was a little nervous for you when you first came in, if I'm being honest, right? Like you came in and, you know, people don't understand everything that you had to overcome, you know, in your childhood and get into this place. And so I was one of those guys that, man, I when I, when I talk about ran into the wall and bumped my head several times, I did that. And I was kind of, when you came down, I was getting to the other side of it. And so, yep. you know, people didn't yep. know what they were going to get out of Mike Evans you know, on the field, off the field, when you came into the league, right? There was nothing terrible or anything like that, but, like, you were a dog. You had that yeah. big personality, and you're super competitive, right? And, and so, you know, when I think about that, bro, uh, I, I'm, like, I'm not surprised that you're balling on the field, but I am surprised that how much of a pro you are. Like, you are like Larry Fitzgerald. You are like Tom Brady, you know? And I say all that to say this. The way you handled yourself throughout this contract, the con, the contract, you know, uh, negotiations is like the best of the best, right? Um, walk us through that process a little bit, because now we're here, you know, we're we're damn near uh, through this season. The season's gone by 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 fast. Were you were you disappointed in not getting the deal done? I mean, obviously, I was disappointed. You know, I wanted to I want to finish my career in Tampa Bay, and I let that be known. Um, you know, but this is the business of the game. Everybody knows that you, you especially, you know, it's a business and you can go about it a certain amount of ways or different type of ways. And I just chose to go about it the only way I know how just play ball. And cause there's nothing I can do about it. I'm not going to mope around and just bring bad energy to the team. I'm under contract and I'm going to fulfill that. And then after the season, you know, we'll see what needs to be done. But, uh, I had a great group of guys in the locker room who really helped me get over that. So, so, so what's next, right? Like, what's next? We're just trying to make a playoff push, and whatever happens after that happens. Look, you're giving me, look, Mike, you know I'm on the other side. Why you, stop this politically, cur stop being Larry Fitzgerald right now. Stop it. Give me the right, nah, we want to know, Larry, bro. Nah, are Larry, you going Larry, back to Tampa? Are you going back to Tampa? I'm just saying, like, Larry Fitzgerald, bro, y'all are just like the pros pro. Y'all, y'all, y'all always going to do the right thing, say the right thing. But like, can you give us a little something, bro? Are we staying in Tampa? You know well, what I mean? Well, he, if he if he says the truth, then yeah, I'm like Larry, because I'm just saying the truth. It's up in the air, obviously, but right now I can't focus on that. I mean, it's in the back of my mind, obviously, because it's my future. But right now I'm trying to stay in the present and trying to win, because that's what I love to do. Can I ask one more question about this contract? Of course, one more. Of course. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, like, why didn't it get done? What was you what were you asking for? Were you asking for 40 mil? What was you asking for, Mike? I can't give you the exact number, but we'll, we'll see. Whenever I sign my new contract, that's what it'll be close to that. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you <laughs> you so funny, and you ain't going nowhere. I don't see I don't see how they let you how they let you go. You know what I'm saying? Just like you're just one of those guys. That's why I say like Larry Fitzgerald, like Larry was there forever, right? And like you know they end up moving him inside when he starts slowing down, and he still was catching a hundred balls a year it was unbelievable do you see yourself and this is what I would say to you bro you know depending on what you're trying like you've done everything already right like you know we can talk hall of fame but you want to you you know that's another conversation you know you want a super bowl you've made good money you're gonna make more money right you still have a lot left in the tank um you know what I would say is when you go different places they don't know you Right. And so like your relationship with everybody in the building in Tampa, from the grounds crew to the equipment managers, to the chefs in the kitchen, um, to everybody, bro, it's like the, 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 the medical staff. Right. Like, you know how it is. Like you can yeah. get to a point yeah. where it's like, yo, you know, you might need a day or two or you might need a half a practice or something like that. And they're like, oh, yeah, we know Mike Evans. But when you go to a new situation. Yeah, yeah. They are trying to get to know you. And sometimes, like, you don't have that much time. It's like, yo, have you not seen the last 10 years? So what I would yeah, say yeah. to you is, like, man, hopefully you guys can work it out. 
uh, you know, you've done everything, but it'd be cool story because you don't see this in modern sports anymore where guys, you know, start in their career in one place. So I will say that. Um, can you see yourself going into that Larry Fitzgerald uh, uh, situation, you know, let's say in a couple years, maybe, you know, three more years at a high level, another three years, 13 years in a row, thou- over a thousand yards, but then you transition into that tight end type position like Larry Fitzgerald did and played another couple years? Look, I'm not, I'm not trying to like mimic someone else's career. Obviously, I try to learn from other guys' careers and what they've done. But it depends on how my body feels. It depends on where I'm at mentally with wanting to play the game. But if you ask me today, obviously, I want to play as long as possible, you know, four to six more years if I can at a high level. Um, as far as switching to a tight end role, I'd probably play defense before I – before I switch to, you know, playing uh, the tight end role or slot receiver. So, you know, I don't know. We'll no, see. bro, you're going you're gonna to have to, bro. The three, four more outside, dominate an XZ. They move you around a little bit. But, bro, think about it. Larry Fitzgerald was running. He came in running a 4-6, I think. So, imagine where he was that year, 13, year 14, right? 4-6, and he was drafted top five. He was drafted top, five. Five. He was he was drafted top Four, yeah, woo, fact check that, check that, text me. What did Larry Fitzgerald run in a 40 when he came out? But think about it, though, it bro. A four, like he a four, 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 five. Four, 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 five. No way. No way. Had to be. Woo, had to be. Can, woo, can you text me? Can we fact check that? Second second pick pick of it doesn't matter. What did you run when you came out? I'm going to go with the unofficial 447. You <laughs> said 447? That's what I do, too. My unofficial is 444. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. So, <laughs> no, man, like, I, I, I think it would be smart. What did they say? They just sent me something. Uh, let me see if they have it. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald ran a 4-6-3. Wow, what pick was he? I think I got that high. What pick that high. was he? What pick was he? he? He definitely was, like, top – I think it was, like, top five maybe. Well, send me what pick Larry Fitzgerald was um, in his draft. But, bro, like, I'm, like, think about that, Mike. It's okay if you go inside, bro. Larry Fitzgerald was probably running a, running a four eight four nine, still catching, and Larry might get mad at me, but that's, that's that you know he, but he was still going over a hundred catches a year. That was unbelievable, bro. He was. It's like it's like your favorite basketball player. You know, I D Wade. You know, sometimes D Wade's my, my favorite. My favorite yeah. yeah, I know. As soon as you came to my where D Wade, I want to meet D Wade, bro. D Wade don't want to meet you yet. You a rookie. You ain't got ten. You ain't got ten seasons with a thousand, a thousand yet. Have you met D Wade? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He know he know how you feel about him. Yeah, he does. Early on, early on, real cool dude, man. Why why is why was he your favorite player? And I know I'm jumping around, but you know it's like just brothers talking in the locker room. Why 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 was D Wade? You, you know how you are when you're a kid. Like when I was in fifth grade, I was watching their playoff game against the Hornets, and I remember when he uh, hit the between the legs on B Diddy on Baron Davis, and he drove to the lane and hit a runner for the game winner, and that was my first game really just realizing wow, like basketball is an amazing sport, and I love Dwayne Wade, and ever since then I watched all D Wade games. And that's just how my fandom, like, it grew. And then they got Shaq uh, a year or two later, and, you know, he carries – D-Wade carries them to the finals in 06. And that's like – when you're a kid, that's when you really look up to guys and you follow their career from then on out. And, you know, I've been a fan ever since. Be- be- before we get back to football, because there's some things that we got to finish up, Larry Fitzgerald, first – First round, third overall pick in the 2004 uh, NFL draft. But I want to stay on basketball a little bit because people don't know you're a real hooper. You're really like that. Um, you still hoop? Not as much. After I got my second contract, I kind of slowed it down a little bit. But, uh, yeah, man, I love basketball. Amazing sport. Who, who's the GOAT? End the discussion, Mike. Mike Evans, end the discussion. Who's the GOAT? No, nah, it, it, it'll never end. It'll never end, and people will always have their opinion. Um, but to me, the GOAT of all sports is LeBron James. Not wow. just basketball. I study all the greats, man. I study them all. And I love all sports, boxing, MMA, basketball, football, baseball, track. And what he's done for how, how long he's done it, I got to give it to King James. Wow. I was not expecting you to go there, bro. Hey, listen, I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. I'm an MJ guy. 
You know, Tom Brady, I, you know, I feel like Tom Brady could be in that discussion. No, Tom, MJ, Floyd Mayweather, Usain Bolt, you know, all those guys are in the conversation. Serena Williams, where you got Serena Williams? Ali. I, I put women and men separate. Okay. So she she's the GOAT for women, absolutely, Serena. Okay. All right. But dang, you said GOAT. Why, why, okay, let's get back to this real quick. Why, why, why LeBron, let's just stay in basketball, why LeBron over MJ? Just talent-wise. I mean, 6'8", 260 plus, faster than point guards. He plays point guard. He can be more versatile, guards multiple positions. When I played basketball, I'd rather guard somebody that's going to just shoot over you a lot instead of just, he could shoot over you, run you over, block your shot, physically impose his will. LeBron can do all those things, and he's still doing it at year 21. I mean, it's unbelievable. And his first stint in Cleveland, I'm a D-Wade fan growing up as a kid, so I don't really like LeBron like that. So I'm not giving, it, giving him his credit. And as a kid, you're super biased. So I'm not giving LeBron his cr credit, and I do my research as I get older. That first stint, uh, Cleveland LeBron, athletic peak, he was unbelievable, man. I did not know he was doing all that, like with the team he was doing it with. I mean, he's he's an unbelievable player. Unbelievable I know, I know, unbelievable LeBron, I know LeBron's gonna appreciate that. Um, that's a lot of love that you showed LeBron. And, you know, I, I know you, so I respect, you know, your point of view when it comes to basketball. Uh, right now in basketball, who are you watching? And then give me your top five players in the NBA right now. Take LeBron out of it, bro. <laughs> like I, I, I mean, basketball is the sport I watch the most. I'm gonna take Bron out, I'm gonna take Bron out. I mean, he's your 21. We're going to let the GOAT just chill on this one. Uh, number one, Jokic. I watch a lot of guys, though. Like, I watch the whole league. Like, I love where the parity is right now. I like the in-season tournament as well. So, we got Jokic one. Giannis two. Jokic, Giannis. Mm. Steph. Luka. And fifth right now, man, it's tough. It's tough. So I can't use Braun. KD. Put KD right there. That's a good one. Yep. Um, you know who I really love, bro? I love uh, Devin Who's Booker, that? bro. Oh, Booker's nice too. Yeah, D Book's nice. See, a lot of these guys, they could be interchangeable in the top five. So you could throw D Book in there. I mean, there's a lot of guys you could throw in there. Really? Who else? Who else we got? Zion, if he can. You know, play games. more games. Did you throw and Embiid in there? Did you? Did you? Did I hear you say anything about Embiid? I, did. I didn't, but he can. He could go in as well. You change him. In Come there. on, he was the MVP last year. You respect it, or you, are you one of the ones that think Joker should have won it? No, I, res I respect it. The MVP award is tough, though. It's, su it's super political, and you know the narrative towards the end of the year, you kind of know who's going to win it. But I mean, obviously, Jokic was the MVP, really, if we're being honest, because you see what he did in the playoffs, and that's when it matters most. You know, I love regular season, so as a fan, I appreciate, you know, everybody going hard in the regular season. But when it absolutely matters the most in the postseason, you know, Jokic got the job done. Okay. Who, who, who you – last question on basketball, I, I, I promise. Who you got Who you got winning this year? Who's coming out of the East? Who's coming out of the West? You give me your prediction. Who wins it? I don't know. Like, a lot of parity this year. A lot of parity. Um, we're going to go – it's tough, man, because I, I got a lot of NBA friends and I don't want to, you know, do my boys dirty. But if I had to choose right now, it's early in the season, but I would say if everybody stays healthy, Milwaukee out the east, Denver or L.A. out the west, Lakers. The lake? Bro, you tri okay, you tripping on the Lakers. <laughs> you they, got, they got Nuggets, Nuggets, Nuggets books, but I wouldn't be surprised if King James and, you know, the Lakers, you know, get it together. Man, I don't know. I, the Suns, you gotta, I mean, it's going to be interesting. You're right. There is a lot of parity. It's football season. You can get anything you need for game day delivered with Uber Eats. Well, almost, almost anything. Eight-part series of game day snacks. I feel like Chef Danny is prepping me for a three-course, a four-course. Is there anything, anything, uh, 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 any such thing? Is there any such thing as a five-course meal? Yes, there is. Okay, well, maybe we'll get to a five-course meal, but first... You're pushing it. You're pushing but it. But first, we got to <laughs> master what? You have to master the basics, and I feel like game day snacks is honestly the basics. We're going to keep it super simple. If you were watching Saturday's game and you have some leftover mac and cheese, 
go ahead, pull that out of the refrigerator because you're gonna be using that today to make some fried mac and cheese bites. Let's dive into this recipe. We got everything we needed delivered with Uber Eats. We're gonna make it super simple by you rolling them into some balls using a wet dry method. That is eggs, flour, and some panko bed crumbs. So right now I want Brandon to get into a rolling method so you guys could see how easy it is to make this at home, fry it and dip it into some marinara sauce. So here's what we want the finished product to look like. This has already went through the wet dry method. So Brandon, it has to look exactly like this. Easy this money. Is how, okay, take that. Okay. Dip it into the egg. Boom, boom. So uh huh. That, so you can't get, you can't be afraid to get your, your fingers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Get all yeah, that let extra. Let me stop. Uh -huh. I don't even want to go. To, yeah, See, look at how I roll that. Boom. boom. Okay. That's it. Yes, and then put it on the plate. Do one more for me. All right, so. Now we're gonna go ahead and fry this, but if you guys wanna make it a little bit healthier, you can pop it into the air fryer. Just use your favorite shortening spray and boom, that's it. All right, chef, so here we go. <laughs> All right, this is our fried mac and cheese bites. Let's see if it's ready for game day. Oh, uh, put that down. Garnish. Yes! Ah! Oh. <laughs> Warrior. Garnish everywhere. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look how I did that. Look how that thing showed up. I love that. All right, here we go. Boom. Yes, now now, you go it's ahead. ready. Yes, okay. go ahead. Dip it. Garnish. Boom, 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 boom. Dip, dip, dip. No, that's three in a row. That's three in a row, Chef. Three for three. It's ready that's for not bad. Come on. Right here. Boom. My house. My kitchen. Game day snacks. Sauce. There you have it. Get almost almost anything for game day delivered with Uber Eats, official on-demand delivery partner of the NFL. Order now. Alcohol in select markets. Product availability may vary by region. See app for details. All right, now I'm back to football, bro. Doing some amazing things, unbelievable. Um, what what what's your what goals do you have now? Like I, I I'm a firm believer in you know having team goals, and for me it was always win a Super Bowl. Never did that. Never made the playoffs. Yeah. My boy got a Super Bowl, so I'm living through you. And then also have personal goals, bro. You know what I mean? Those individual goals. And, and I really believe you got to have both. Can you can you let us know, like, what's next for you as an individual? We know you want to win another Super Bowl. Like, you're that type of competitor. But give me what's next. Just keep playing. Play better. You know, I can play better. Just, you know, catch a lot of balls, make a lot of plays. You know, that's what my goal is. I don't have a set number. So, but, so you know, I want to still be one of the top guys in the league for as long as I'm in the league. So, are you one of those guys? This is interesting now because, like, you could really uh, put a lot of people up on game here. Are you one of the guys that go into the year and you don't have any individual goals? You're like, whatever happens, happens. Yeah, absolutely. Because I I can't control all those things. I can control my work ethic and what I put into the game. That's it. Like, I can't control all right, fifteen hundred yards. I can't control that. I don't know how many targets I'm going to get. I don't know how the defense is going to play me all year. You know, so it's a lot of things that you can't control, you, you, especially you, at receiver. You kind of can control it, Mike. You how? know what you can do? You can how? go to the you can what? go to the sideline, take your helmet off, throw your helmet down, yell, scream at the quarterback. The no, OC. I've done, and I've done that. I've done that before. I know you have it. Get out of here. No, I've done it before. Trust me. I, I See, that early in my career, people wasn't really following the books. So right. they don't know. Like you said, you know me, and you, you're surprised that I'm a pro now. But I still, you know, get fiery and, and had that that passion. Right. But I, I've learned how to control it a little more because obviously it saves energy when you're not yelling all the time and, and cursing and you know having your veins pop out your neck and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I did that too many times, boy. Um, that's interesting what you just said, man. It was probably halfway through my career where I realized that you know setting these goals. Uh, you know, as an athlete, like setting those type of goals um, can set you up for a world of hurting, man. Like, you know, because there's things that you can't control, like you said. And then also, you know, you never know, right? Like if you go out there and you say 1,500 is the mark, yeah. like that's what you're aiming for. But yeah. you're aiming for 1,500, you hit 1,500. But the reality is you might be a 1,700 guy, right? Yeah, absolutely. Or you might not be a 1,500 guy. You might be 1,100 guy or 900 yep. guy. And now you're sitting there stressed out and pissed off because you thought that you were, you, you were, you were a 1,500 guy. And so 
you know, being able to go in and control what you can control is what I realized. And man, it took so much pressure and so much stress off of me. Like, was did you pick that up early, or did you pick that up like, you know, a couple years ago? Uh, probably like around year three, because year two was my worst year in the league. So I was just struggling. But I, I really, I have like four or five really bad games. And I played 15 games a year. I had like four or five really tough games, drops, routes, not as good, missing blocks, things like that. And I was like, all right, I just got to lock in and focus. And you know, I just realized, because I was thinking, I want to be up there with the top guys. I want to have 1,500 like B. Marsh and 1,700 A, B and Julio and things like that. And then I set myself up for that, for failure, really, by thinking that. So after that, I was just like, yo, I'm going to just work hard. Ball comes my way. I got to make the play. All right, so bro. That's how it happened. Like, year two, after year two. I got to ask you, man. Can, can I get a little messy? What you got? I'm going to get a little messy. I know you 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 still playing, and it ain't going to be until about six, seven years where, you know, you give me a little bit more, right? Right now, you 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 stand right there. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna throw a name. I'm gonna throw a couple of names out there, and just like it's word association. So I'm gonna throw some names out there, and just tell me the first word to come to mind. Right? I'm gonna start easy, and then they might heat up as we go. So what? What are we? What, what's the game? Word association. I got you. Just say a word when it, Tom Brady with one greatest. Greatest. Okay. D Wade. My favorite. LeBron James. King. Todd Bowles. I play I played for Todd Bowles. Love Todd Bowles. Did I say more than one word? <laughs> sure, sure. It's it's your world. That's my guy. My guy. One of my favorite head coaches. Love him. Love him. Marshawn Lattimore. Great corner. <laughs> Bro, you, <laughs> you I can't what? with you, Mike. I can't with I can't you. Say. I went, why why y'all beefing? Bro, y'all been beefing for eight years. What is the beef about? Tell me. Tell the people right now why what is going on with you and Marshall Lattimore, bro? <laughs> and we're just competitive, man. It's, it just gets competitive. You know how it is on the field, man. It gets competitive. I'm gonna be honest, Mike. I I'm super competitive too. But how how long have y'all been like what is it? He's been in the league eight years, maybe? He's a little younger Seven. than you? Seventeen. He's I, a rookie. I haven't it's, beefed he, with it started from I haven't beefed with no corner that long. And not at that level. Like it's intense. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> like, can you can you can you give us a little history for the people who don't know like like how did all this start? It's very competitive. It gets really intense. Uh, everybody knows the history and it, it's all over. If if people want to look it up, they can look it up. Like it started with me being wrong. I would definitely say that. Did you apologize to him? Yeah, we we, we apologize. We hashed it out and we're just competitive and you know we we go at it. And we had the incident last year where I was just defending my teammate, and that's how both times our situations happen. You know, me defending my teammates. And, you know, that's one thing that I'm really passionate about is my teammates. And, you know, things could have been a little different, but it wasn't. So, you know, when we play, it just gets super competitive. He's a competitive guy, and I'm super competitive as well. Can you ever see yourself, like, going to dinner with him and just being cool? Because I, I played that my well, last couple of like, I don't really go to dinner with dudes like that, really. <laughs> you know, I like going to dinner with my wife. And if, you know, some of my homies, you know, we – We've gone to dinner, but like one on one dinners, like what you mean? So group, like look, I don't group, do those. group. I don't do those. Listen, let's say let's say here's the scenario, here's the situation. Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, they don't give you what you asking for this off season, but the Saints do. Now y'all teammates, and you know how it is on the road. You just said you really passionate about teammates. Y'all fly into Carolina. What we do when we land? Hey, y'all, let's go get a bite to eat before, you know, the 8 o'clock meeting. Okay? I barely I barely go out to eat oh, bro, with my teammates. On, bro. All right, well, you the new I guy. Sometimes. You the new guy in New Orleans. You the new guy in New Orleans. Marshawn Lattimore, Mike T, if he's still there, Alvin Kamara, all the boys. Uh, uh, Jameis Winston. Yo, you want to go to dinner with us? We can go to <laughs> – 
Why are you doing my boy like that, man? I love Jameis. <laughs> oh yeah, you play. He was your quarterback. <laughs> So so the hey, longest, let's go. We're gonna take you to Uptown. We're gonna take you to Koshans. We're gonna take you to Koshans. Crazy hypothetical. If somebody's my teammate, I'm cool with them. All right. Well, I I, I appreciate you uh being honest. I appreciate you saying, you know what? It started with me being wrong. You apologize. Y'all talked it through, and it's just com it's just competition. I love it, bro. You we're, the last thing I'll say on this last question I asked here is like, where do you rank this rivalry? Because it, it really is, and it's like a friend. I would say it's like it's competitive, like just those battles between y'all two. Where do you rank it all time? Yeah, you got Odell and Josh Norman, right? That was a legendary yeah. one, but it ain't last seven, eight years. So where y'all at? I mean, that just shows like our durability, you know. So <laughs> and just being with one team, so. I mean, we've been playing against each other for a while, so it's up there. I don't know where it ranks. You know, he, he's a good player, and I'm a good player, so or we're both great players, and it's a good matchup. A legendary one. I love it. Uh, before we wrap the show, bro, a uh, little bit of current uh, football. You know, like you said, you guys are in the NFC South. Um, you know, what, what, what is it going to take for you guys to get it done? You know, this is cream season. That Julian Edelman always say this is cream season. Post Thanksgiving, yeah, like cream rises to the top. That's basically what it means. Okay, we yeah, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> so, so like you know, now it's like who's who, right? You know, what do y'all got to do to make sure y'all get into the playoffs? I mean, we got to win majority of these games. I mean, we play. We got Atlanta this week. They're in the first place of our division. So we start with that. Got to get this win, and we just got to play good ball. We're playing good complimentary ball some games but not consistently. If we get that down consistently, continue to play complimentary football, stop turning the ball over on offense and lower the penalties, we'll have a good chance. I love it. I love it. Um, you, you know, your 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 ex-teammate Tom Brady, a few more for you. Your ex-teammate Tom Brady uh, came out and said he just didn't – basically like he didn't like where today's ball is at, you know. Um, how do you feel about today's NFL um, – you know, I think it's exciting, but I also see what Tom is saying, right? Like when we first, when you first got in league, you're still there. You had the Toms, you had the Peyton Mannings of the world, and it was just like machines and details. And that's probably how y'all won the Super Bowl, right? So, like, how how would you describe where the NFL's at today? I mean, I obviously didn't play. You know, when you and and Tom and those guys were playing, I played towards the back end of y'all career. Um, the player safety thing, I understand, but I really wish the rules were different. I mean, it's a violent game and that's what we signed up for. So, you know, I love the big hits. We on offense, we can't even crack back anymore. I used to love doing that. Like that was one of my favorite things. A uh, big D lineman, they can't see me and I get a chance to take them out. Cause when it's a change of position, phone board pick six, they're looking to take us out. We go across the middle, they're looking to take us out. And I used to love getting an opportunity to get some, get some get back. The screen game, like it was way better back then because guys could chop, cut back, do all those things, and you can't do it anymore. So, like, I understand player safety, but it's what we signed up for. I promise the players will still play if the rules were modified a little bit. All right, two more, bro. The the year that things turned around for you, right, the Super Bowl, like the team, right, you guys think about it. You know, a lot of talk, Bruce, Tom, not on the same page, Coach Bowles, head coach of the Tampa Bay Bucks now was the defensive coordinator, right? Like, uh, you know, halfway through that year, it seemed like things started to click. I never forget, bro, like the first game of the season, if I can – I might be off here, but they put you in the slot and you had a um, – it was cover two and you had a scene. And y'all did – it was a disconnect there. You know, Tom threw maybe a pick or two. And so, like the first couple couple games, y'all was just not on the same page. What changed? What was what was that moment? Like, what happened? Uh, twenty twenty year. Yeah, when y'all won the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, well, we were we we're all new, like with with each other. I mean, we didn't have an off season. We didn't have OTAs. We had just training camp, straight to training camp, and you know, it was our first time. It's Tom's first time in a whole new system. Um, so he's getting adjusted to that which he never really fully got probably until the next year, maybe 2021, because he still used his New England verbiage sometimes, you know, especially with him and Gronk. They would have their own, <laughs> like, verbiage. 
And he's just that smart. Like he knew where guys were supposed to be. Um, so he was getting adjusted to that. We had other new players. We had Lenny Fournette. We had all those guys. We had Gronk. So it was just a new team. And we were super talented, but we had never played together before. And we played the first game of the year. We played against the Saints, who were probably the best team we played that year, honestly. Or them were the Chiefs were the best team we played that year. We played them first game, and they've been together for a really long time. Really nasty, good defense. And, you know, they had our number that year uh, in the regular season. And then we figured things out, had a great postseason, great ending to the regular season. I think we won eight straight games. And, you know, we hit the stride at the right time during that season. I loved it, man. It was a legendary run. And for Tom and you guys to do that in year one was legendary. Last one for you. You know, I feel like, bro, you're just the guy that we always uh, forget about. It's like we talk about the top five wide receivers and we – and me included, right? Like, I'll be honest with you. It's like, oh, but what about Mike Evans, right? And there's times where it's like, you know, I recall, I'm like, no, 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 hold on, hold on. We forgetting about Mike Evans. Um, can you give me your top five to end this show? I don't, I don't got a top five, but I got a top, like, ten at least that can be – top five or the, the number one guy love it uh, there's so many there's so many great options can we can you give us a couple I mean, there's too many i mean cheetah Devonte adams Diggs, jay jess jamar chase keenan allen me i mean there's so many guys that can could be in there cooper cup and there's so many great receivers um everybody's situation is different um and you know we go through injuries and things like that but when we're all healthy we all can be in that. A.J. Brown, unbelievable receiver. He's, he's in the conversation for the best receiver in the league. I mean, there's so many great receivers. D.J. Moore, he's underrated as hell. C.D. Lamb, I mean, he's a popular player, but I feel like he's underrated. Tank Dale. I mean, all like these guys. Even those young boys, too, like the Tank Dales of the, of the world. Tank Dale, man, prayers up for him. Nico <laughs> Collins. Like, there's so many great receivers in this league. I feel like it's definitely the golden age of wide receivers. And there's been some really great eras of receivers. But now these guys can do everything inside out, run all the routes, vertical threat, run after catch, tough. So, I mean, there's a lot of guys you can pick. Well, bro. But if I'm healthy, I'll take myself. <laughs> Facts. Right. Yeah, no one's dead with you, what you have done. Ten years in a row going over a thousand. Bro, legendary is epic. Keep going. Um, love you, man, for jumping on with me, man. And I uh, can't wait to catch up in the future, bro. Thank you. Self love. All right, big bro. Love you, man. All right, love you too. Happy holidays. Happy holiday. Yeah. Came up from the mud. It's like I walk around with a shoe stain. Uncle gave me fire when we kicked it. He was Luke Kane. Remember, we were struggling for it. Didn't need it. Loose change. Now the money never stopped. And I feel like I'm Bruce Wayne. And never got to tell me that I'm going because I've been gone. Just want to be judged by my actions, not my skin tone. The hustle man got my feet planted like the Flintstones. I'm yelling that we did it. High stepping in the end zone. I got my first check and mess around and gave my mama rack. Always had my back, so now I got to get my mama back. No AC. Had us drilling. Yeah. It was chain smoke. Promise y'all to make it through this storm. You need a raincoat. Look up to some.